Instead of being a product of my guru's mercy at that time, I was a product of Maya. Maya means that you see everything incorrectly. That you accept one thing for something else. So it means that you're an illusion. Это означает, что вы находитесь в иллюзии. Я пришел в этот мир полностью погруженный в иллюзию. Я провел так много лет, пытаясь выполнить свои иллюзионные желания. Fulfill one's illusory aspirations for happiness within this material world is just like eating very pungent and spicy food. Пытаться исполнить свои иллюзорные желания в этом материальном мире это подобно тому, как если человек ест очень, очень аромат, наполненный полной специей пищу, очень острую пищу. 
And all it does is it creates a terrible fire within your heart. И когда вы едите такую пищу, то у вас и в таком случае у вас сердце просто огонь горит. Such a fire that you can never be satisfied. Такой огонь, который не, вы никогда не сможете удовлетворить. So, насытить. So my birth was not glorious. И мое рождение не было славным. My birth was quite terrible. Мое рождение было достаточно ужасным. And in this lifetime, I engaged in some terrible activities. И в это в течение этой жизни я занимался ужасной деятельностью. But by the grace of Lord Krishna, I was able to come into the contact with the Lotus Feet of my spiritual master. Но по милости Кришны я смог соприкоснуться с Лотосными стопами моего духовного учителя. Prabhupada is such a great soul that he touched my heart and he started to fill my bad heart with his good qualities. So the actual fact is I've been saved by the mercy of my spiritual master. И факт состоит в том, что я был спасен по милости моего духовного учителя. So therefore, и поэтому, if any of you perceive anything or quality in me, it is only the mercy of my spiritual master. Если кто-нибудь кто -нибудь из вас видит какие-то качества во мне, то все это является проявлением качеств моего духовного учителя. And so today you're all coming forward so nicely and you're saying so many wonderful things. But I, I want you to actually understand that that glorification should be placed at the lotus feet of my spiritual master should come. And due to that All of us, we should become ever so much more determined to serve Shiva Prabhupada and to serve the mission of Shiva Prabhupada. We should be determined that we want our lives to become exactly like the life that was shown to us. Мы должны быть уверены, что наши жизни станут такими же, как показался в своей жизни Шиллопад. That we will be a pure and true devotees of the Lord. Чтобы мы стали чистыми и истинными преданными Господу. That we will always endeavor to keep our minds absorbed in the devotional service of Lord Krishna. Чтобы мы всегда держали свои умы погруженные в преданное служение Кришне. Ever, the contemplation for the tendency of sense gratification comes within our minds, we'll immediately push that far away to engagement and service into the chanting of the holy names of Lord Krishna. в умах появится размышление о чувственных наслаждениях, мы должны выкинуть их в It will never waste a moment of the Lord's time in His devotional service. That we will always try to be merciful to fallen souls by giving them the greatest boon of the human form of life in Krishna consciousness. Мы будем всегда, мы будем всегда стремиться дать всем падшим, всем падшим душам высшее благо, которое можно им дать сознание Кришны. Just like a few moments ago, 
Так же, как несколько моментов назад. We sang the Guru Vastakam prayers. We sang the Guru Vastakam prayers. Мы пели молитву Гуру Вастаки. And it explains that the spiritual master is like uh, a great uh, ocean of mercy. But the, the spiritual master is receiving benediction from the ocean of mercy. So Srila Prabhupada is such a, a cloud that's letting the rain of mercy fall upon everyone within this material, material universe. Therefore, I would like to request all of those who are present here today, and particularly my disciples, to always meditate upon and beg for the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Здесь особенно моих учеников всегда медитирует на эту милость Шивы Прабхупада. Шивы Прабхупада is always absorbed in the Sankirtan of Nushri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Шивы Прабхупада всегда погружен в движение Санкиртана Шри Чайтани Махапрабху. So therefore, meditate upon Prabhupada's absorption in Lord Chaitanya's service and you also become absorbed in that service. Поэтому медитируйте на эту погруженную шею Прабхупада служение Господа Читани и также погрузитесь в это служение. Those verses explain that the spiritual master is always engaged in worshiping the deity and cleansing the temple. And Srila Prabhupada showed that to us throughout the entire world. Эти стихи объясняют, что духовный учитель, он всегда занят поклонением божествам и тем, что убирает храм. И Шрила Прабхупада показал это, делая на себе, делая это по всему миру. Шрила Прабхупада was always absorbed in great happiness when he would see that people would relish Krishna Prashad. Шрила Прабхупада всегда погружался в великое счастье, когда он видел, как люди наслаждаются Кришна Прасадом. So therefore, we should also meditate upon the Prabhupada and distribute so much Krishna Prashad to the uplifting of society. И поэтому мы тоже должны медитировать на эту милшую Прабхупаду и распространять Кришну Прасад с тем несчастным людям этого общества. And it goes on to explain that a devotee of the caliber of Shiva Prabhupada is the most confidential associate of the Lord because he understands very well the mission of the Lord. И затем он продолжает объяснять, что такой преданник, как Шива Прабхупада, он является самым близким so again, I'd like to request all of my disciples and all of my friends and well-wishers who are here today. Realize that Srila Prabhupada is the reservoir of all good qualities. And make your lives wonderful and make the lives of everyone within this material world wonderful by absorbing yourself in Srila Prabhupada's service. So my first birth, it was not a nice birth. И мое первое рождение, оно не было таким уж хорошим. But my second birth, when I met my spiritual master. Но второе рождение я получал своего духовного учителя. And with that second birth, actually, I've come to life. И на самом деле с этого второго рождения я начал жить. Because my spiritual master has placed mercy inside of me. Поскольку мой духовный учитель наделил меня своей милостью. So. On this day, I pray that I will always remember the mercy of my spiritual master. That I will always remember that I am simply the product of my Guru's mercy. And that by keeping my mind fixed at the lotus feet of my spiritual master, 
I'll never become puffed up and proud. И сосредоточив свой ум на лотосных стопах моего духовного учителя, я никогда не возгоржусь и не возгоржусь. И не просто не возгордиться, главное не возгордиться, но также и быть полезным в служении по Трупаду. Бхагавадгита сказано, что That Krishna is the friend of everyone. So Krishna is the friend of everyone. And it said that the spiritual master is the representative of Krishna. И говорится, что духовный учитель является представителем Кришны. Therefore, the spiritual master is the friend of all living beings. Поэтому духовный учитель является другом всех живых существ. So I pray that on this day, I'll meditate on how Prabhupada is really the friend of everyone within this whole material world. И поэтому я в этот день я молюсь, чтобы я мог медитировать на то, что Шил, как Шил Пурпали является другом всех живых существ этого мира. And I'll meditate on how strong endeavor Шила Пурпали underwent to save all of us. Я медитирую, размышляю о том, какие очень какие усилия Шил Пурпали приложил для того. And I pray that Шила Пурпали will enthuse me. And in that very same way, that I will have that uh, mentality of being everyone's friend and well-wisher by preaching and giving them Krishna consciousness. I pray that Prabhupada will bless me. И я молюсь, чтобы Прабхупада благословил меня. And give me that same equal vision. И дал мне то же самое видение. To be the friend of all living beings. Чтобы быть другом всех живых существ. By having the determination. To preach and give everyone Krishna consciousness. So, I just want everyone to understand uh, where the honor and where the glory should actually be placed. Я хочу, чтобы все поняли, где же на самом деле почести и прославление должны, к чему должны они относиться. And practically speaking, to be very, very honest, I don't consider myself a devotee. I can hardly con if, if if we look at the Vedic literatures, and if we look at the standard which is given to being human, Practically, it's difficult to consider myself even a human being. Практически говоря, я не могу себя называть даже человеком. But I simply pray that by Prabhupada's mercy, I will become a real person, and one day I'll become a real devotee. И я просто молюсь его Прабхупаде, чтобы в один день я мог стать на самом деле личностью и в один и в тот и когда-то стать и настоящим преданным. And I I pray to Prabhupada on this day that all of you as well you will become real people and real true and pure devotees. Я сегодня молюсь также молюсь Прабхупаде, чтобы все из вас также стали истинными настоящими людьми и настоящими чистыми преданными. And that we'll always Work together, in the spirit of love and trust and harmony, to execute Prabhupada's will of delivering this world with Krishna consciousness. So thank you very much. Uh, I feel. And to be honest again, I know that it is the proper etiquette to receive glorification from the disciples. But to be very honest, I feel embarrassed to be receiving this glorification. Но если быть честным, я чувствую себя смущенным, получая это прославление. Generally, 
the disciples and so many other people they're always asking some blessings from the spiritual master. But today I'm going to ask a blessing from all of you. Bless me that I'll never fail in the service of my master. Bless me that I will be able to put away all my personal motivation. Bless me that I'll never want to keep anything for myself. And bless me that anything may, that may ever come to me in my life, I will simply take that and offer it to the lotus feet of Sri Prabhupada. I moved to Vrindavan. Seventy-nine, the GBC sent me to Greece. I lasted there one year and the government kicked me out for preaching. They kicked me out. Then the GBC sent me to Israel. And I was preaching to the Jews for two years. And then the government, they kicked me out. <laughs> so then Krishna gave me a little chance to go back to Vrindavan. And then Lord Purnima, 1984, then Krishna kicked me out of Vrindavan. He gave me such a good kick <laughs> that I landed in Manchester, England. <laughs> Manchester, England is undoubtedly the most hellish place on the earth. The sun never shines in Manchester. It rains 365 days a year in Manchester. The, you read of the Industrial Revolution. <coughs> the Industrial Revolution began in Manchester. <laughs> because they created this spinning mill that they would spin the thread for making clothes. The spinning mill. Because it was always wet and raining there, the thread would never break. Anyhow, I was in Manchester. <laughs> the, the parts that the translator can understand, you can just fill in yourself. <laughs> so when I was in Manchester, I was suffering. Because I had been in Vrindavan and I had been in the Mediterranean and all of a sudden here I was in the rain all the time. So one day I was sitting in the temple office and the telephone rang. Hello? And there's a man on the other end of the phone. I said, hello, can I help you? I said, hello, can I help you? He said, my wife just died. I said, my wife just died. I said, my wife just died. And her last request was to have a Hare Krishna funeral. She was to have a Hare Krishna funeral. She was to have a Hare Krishna funeral. He said, can you do a Hare Krishna funeral? Sure, I can do a Hare Krishna funeral. So then he told me where to come. And then I hung up the phone. And I went, my God, what's a Hare Krishna funeral? At any rate, I drove way. 
to the country where those people live. И мне пришлось поехать далеко в это в деревню, где жили эти люди. And I went to the funeral home. Я пришел в похоронный дом. And the lady was laying in the box. Леди это лежала в гробу. Я посмотрел. And I had some gunga water, and I sprinkled some gunga water around. And I had some tulsi leaves, and I threw some tulsi leaves. And I had some maha garlands from the deity, and I put a maha garland on the body. And then they closed the box. And then they took it for the big ceremony. And this place, this fancy place like church, but they cremate the body. So there was a Church of England priest there. He said, I will do half the ceremony, you will do half the ceremony. I will go up in the box and I will sing the prayers. Then I will come down. Then I will bow to you. And then you go up in the box. And you do whatever the, whatever in the world the Hare Krishnas do at a funeral. So he did his business. Then I went up in the box. I opened the Bhagavad Gita. And I read second chapter, some verses from second chapter Bhagavad Gita. And they had like they had printed like a little program. On one side it had the Church of England prayer. And on the other side it had the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So I told everyone, I said, because this lady was so devoted to Krishna, for her soul, we will sing the Hare Krishna song. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Anyhow, there are about 200 people there, and they all, and they've never seen a Hare Krishna before. And they were all singing so beautifully. And even the people from the funeral company, they had their long black suits on, they were going, <laughs> So then, after the kirtan was finished, they, they, they put the box in for the burning. And then me and the Church of England priest, we went to the door and the people were coming out and we were shaking hands with everyone. So one of the ladies came up to me and said, What you said was so beautiful. I never heard knowledge like that before. I can understand everything that you said. And this is the first Buddhist funeral ceremony I've ever attended. <laughs> so then everything was finished. So then the lady's husband came up to me and said, why don't you come home with us for a short while and have something to drink and then you can return to Manchester. So we went to their home and they had a very opulent home. And we went in and everyone was sitting there very Silent. And I was a little nervous, I didn't know what to do. And I was trying to think, how can I preach over here? So then one old lady sitting next to me, she turned to me and she said, Did you know Jean? And then one old lady sitting next to me, she said, Did you know Jean? 
And I said, no, I didn't know her. Did you know her? Ja sam... Was that a Ja skazam, nie? A was that a She said, oh yes, I knew her. She was my daughter. No, ona skazam, da, ja znali ju. Ona što bila moja dojče ju. And then I said, well, tell me something about this woman. Ja skazam, no, skazite da ga mi što ima za biti ženšin. She said, Well, a few years ago, one Sunday afternoon, she and her husband, they drove down to London. And they were just driving around outside of London. And they were in this one village. And they saw this place called Bhakti Vedanta Manor. So they were curious, what is this place? So they went inside. And there was some singing and dancing going on. And my daughter was attracted. But they didn't have time. So they were leaving. And they saw that there was a big display of books. So she made her husband buy her two or three books. And then she brought the books back to our, their home. Shortly after that, we realized that she had cancer. And it was a very terrible type of cancer. And she just started wasting away immediately. And she was so sick. But she sat and she started reading those books. And the next thing we knew is she started singing this Hare Krishna song all the time. And then she sent a letter to that Bhaktivedanta manor. And she asked for some beads and some pictures and so And then she said, you see over there in the corner of the room? That's her altar. So I went over there and she had a beautiful altar set up. And her mother told me, said, even though she was so sick with cancer, she was just crying. Every day she would sit for hours and she would just chant Japa. And she became a vegetarian. And she made everyone in the family a vegetarian. And then, at one point, she became so sick one night that her husband thought for sure she would die. And so her husband said, What should I do? Should I take you to the hospital? Should I call the priest? And she looked at me and she said, No, no, don't do any of these things. I'm just going to chant Hare Krishna. And I know that if I chant Hare Krishna, that Prabhupada and Lord Krishna will protect me. But this lady, she became like this just by reading Prabhupada's books. She never had any association, but she became such a good devotee because she received a book. And when she died, she was Krishna conscious. So this is why giving these books of Prabhupada is so important. So by associating with Prabhupada and taking shelter of Prabhupada, Prabhupada's divine spiritual qualities will start to enter the lives and the hearts and the lives of all the people of Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and, and all these different stuns. Prabhupada will enter their hearts. 
So it's very, very wonderful that the book distribution is going on. Это очень чудесно, что продолжается распространение книг. And Prabhupada liked this book distribution so much. And we have heard that if we want to go back to Godhead, we have to get the mercy of the great souls. So if we want to get the mercy of Prabhupada, we should all do the things that Prabhupada liked. So everyone should take a little time, either a lot of time, or if you're too busy, a little time for book distribution. And if somehow you just can't get out and distribute books, then you should get out and distribute some prasadam. And if you can't distribute prasadam, you should get out and distribute some and if you can't distribute prasad, if you can't distribute books, then go on Harinam.